A Marion police officer is still in the hospital after a head-on collision that nearly took her life Monday morning. News 13's Anjali Patel shows us how the community is coming together for her and her family. The Marion police chief says it's going to be a long road to recovery for Officer Brianna Tony, but his department and this community will be with her every step of the way. What began as a typical commute to work ended in a fiery collision for Marion police officer Brianna Tony. Our world was turned upside down uh, first thing uh, Monday morning along with, with Brianna's uh, changed her life forever. She was driving in Mitchell County just before 6.15 a.m. Monday when a pickup truck driving left of center hit her patrol car head on, according to State Highway Patrol. You get that um, that sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach that um, anytime you hear the, the severity of it, is uh, your, your first hope is that, you know, are they going to be okay? She was trapped, but thankfully a good Samaritan pulled her out of that burning car. She was airlifted to Johnson City Medical Center where she underwent surgery on one of her legs Thursday morning. And she was able to talk a little bit to me yesterday and so um, she was reflecting on some of that as well. So you can really tell from talking to her how much that, that hit home with her. And you know, it's just a, it's a reminder for any of us how, how much uh, life can change in an instant. She'd only been in law enforcement about a year and a half, the police chief says, and it'll be some time before she's back out patrolling the streets once again. In the meantime, the community is making sure her two young kids and husband are taken care of so that she can focus on getting better. A GoFundMe already raising more than $9,000. To see her car, that, that hurt. And a fellow officer's daughter is pitching in too. Madeline Hink is auctioning off one of her paintings to benefit the family. She's already received a bid for $300. And I grew up here in the police department, basically. I used to come here as a kid all the time, you know, meet everyone. And just to see her, like, hurt and stuff, that just puts sadness. This devastating turn of events, bringing this close-knit community and police department even closer together. The community support that we have here uh, in this community is second to none. The police chief says his department plans to host some fundraisers in the future to help Officer Tony's family. He also plans to honor that good Samaritan who pulled her out of that burning car. The Marion police chief also wishes the other person who was injured in the crash, Audie Peterson Jr., a speedy recovery. State troopers say Peterson may have suffered from a medical issue at the time of the crash. <laughs> And new at 5.30, crime in several areas is on the rise in Haywood County. While homicides are down, a report shows drug charges have increased by more than 260 since 2019. News 13's Rex Hodge spoke with the sheriff's office about the increase in drug activity. He also looked into other crime numbers. Haywood County crime statistics for last year are up in many categories. The captain here says drug activity is often a common denominator in many of them. Meth and uh, heroin and fentanyl are, are pretty close. They're running neck and neck for us. Uh, Captain Tony Cope says drug use remains a crisis. Anytime that you lose a life to, to a fentanyl overdose or a heroin overdose, you know, if you lose one, that is one too many. He says drugs like fentanyl and meth are getting cheaper. The supply arriving here on highways connecting to places like Atlanta. Makes it easy for those drug trafficking organizations to uh, travel and distribute their drugs uh, throughout North Carolina and Western North Carolina. Crime stats showing about 16 more pounds of meth arriving here last year compared to the year before. Cope says drugs are often the reason behind increases in other crimes like scams, domestic violence, B&Es, and vehicle thefts. He says population growth and the pandemic are factors too. I think it's really both of those. Uh, I think both of those play a factor in that, you know, economic challenges. The sheriff's office says addressing the drug crisis must go beyond arrests, calling for stiffer consequences, longer mandatory sentences, and establishing a drug court. An organization called Mountain Strong comes at the issue from another direction, providing prevention services focused on preventing substance misuse, especially early on, to avoid substance abuse disorders later. A campaign targeting parents underway. Information to help them support youth uh, in avoiding not not just underage drinking, but substance misuse in general. Cope says many angles are involved. I think mental health is huge in uh, rehabilitation, working together to make uh, to help people and see if we can uh, 
redirect their path. And uh, He says the public can help too. Uh, anything they can do to assist? Well, I think that uh, I think the biggest thing they can do is if they see something, say something. More detailed crime statistics will be available when the annual report comes out in about a month. As the mask debate in our schools continues, there's a new vote tonight from the Buncombe County Board of Education. News 13 Samir Nefsi breaks down the data driving the decision to keep face coverings in place. As the number of COVID-19 cases across the state are starting to trend downward, the number of Buncombe County School students contracting the virus has increased. This has led Superintendent Tony Baldwin to recommend to the Board of Education to continue with the school district's current mask mandate, but not all are in favor with the decision. All those in favor? Aye. Thursday night, Buncombe County's Board of Education voted unanimously to move forward with the district's current mask mandate. But the decisions that we make in terms of our, the best interests of our students is to maximize their opportunity to be in that classroom and to take advantage of that face-to-face -face instruction with the teacher. Superintendent Tony Baldwin presented data to the school board indicating a surge in cases among students and staff members. As of January 12th, more than 1,000 students had the virus and more than 200 staff members also tested positive. Compared to a month prior, only 255 students tested positive and 184 staff staff members were out with COVID. I attribute this to a large degree about the high transmissibility of the Omicron variant. The decision to keep the mandate in place, not okay for some. We're promoting wear a mask, take medicine, follow science. And folks, I've told you from time immemorial, science does not give the fact. Science is a process of analyzing to get to a theory. Others agree it's the best path forward. We seem to be coming out of this latest spike, latest spike in COVID, but please continue to listen to the experts and continue to keep masks in place in our schools. Our recommendation is that we maintain current mask requirements. As of January 28th, nearly 76% of North Carolina school districts have a mask mandate in place compared to January 11th, when only 60% required masks. I'm encouraged that when we come back for our March meeting that we may see some variance in that recommendation with the levels of transmissibility due to this Overcron variant. And I don't believe it's going to end necessarily anytime quickly. The Board of Education will revisit the mask mandate at their next meeting on March 3rd. In Buncombe County, Samir Nafsi, News 13.